Brent is not looking at the rain. Well, he probably is, but uh, he's not looking at it from the same perspective as I am. As you can see, it's raining. Yes. And uh, I went outside just to check that the pitter patter on the roof was, in fact, water. And indeed, it would seem to be so. Anyway, you can see that out here, well, there's still patches of sun. And there are, well, isolated showers going down onto the Mara floor. But the rains come over there from what direction would that be? I'm pretty much from the west. And it's just raining on the escarpment at the moment. There we are looking out of our little window, which will one day hopefully be replaced with one that does not have cracks in it. Good. OK, now we've got a number of questions which I would like to answer. I'm just going to flick to them. Flickety, flickety, floop, floop. Did I really say that? Sounds that? Did I say flickety, flickety, floop, floop? That's embarrassing. Okay. Must be the cold on the top of my bald head. Now, Genevieve in New York, you want to know about dietary requirements of animals here and if they have slightly different dietary requirements from the ones at home. In other words, do they eat differently? Um, they don't. Or, uh, well, let me take that back. They have the same nutritional requirements, but because the soil is so very different, here, it will require them to eat in a different way sometimes. So one of the major nutrients, in fact, that is found down here, one of the reasons that it's possible for these animals to breed in such huge profusion around here, about 500,000 young wildebeesties are born on the short grass plains every year. Apparently, very poor in calcium, most of Africa's soils are poor in calcium, but very rich in phosphorus. And that phosphorus there allows for an enormous amount of milk production. Apparently, phosphorus is hugely important for milk production. So the amount of phosphorus there plays a huge role in allowing the wildebeest herd to birth that many youngsters and feed them until they're either knocked off by trampels or uh, predators or whatever else knocks them off. One in six, apparently, in some books will tell you only one in six make it back here on their first migration route. So, you know, the nutrient requirements are the same, their methods of eating, the way they move around will be different in order to get those nutrient requirements, if you know what I mean. So, uh, you know, the wildebeest at, in the Kruger or in Juma are totally sedentary. There aren't as many of them because they face greater competition from things like impala and zebra. But here, where they can move, they're not dependent on water. They can move, of course, from water source to water source. Uh, they can exist in greater numbers because, well, there aren't that many uh, other animals able to compete with them in this particular ecosystem. So I hope that answers your question. Now, we've got a lot of other questions to get through, which we will do once we have got to Jamie and her male lion. Ow.